hi everybody I never know when I say hi how it's gonna come out okay so I'm sure that's probably pretty obvious I'm sick <laughs> I tend to get uh, bronchitis and laryngitis several times a year of year really a year <laughs> And this just happens to be one of those times so I apologize for my voice I have been saving it so that I had enough voice to use for today's program <laughs> and then later for Neelay silver silk Facebook page so I know I sound terrible I'm so sorry I um, I have a cough drop so excuse the cough drop and excuse the water but they are both necessary for me to make it through today's video Good morning, everybody. I'm so happy to see you. I hope all of you are well. I started out great this week. I was feeling good. And then Tuesday evening, it just hit me. And if you've got kids, I'm sure you probably know, like when school starts, <laughs> it never fails. The first month of school, everybody catches the crud. That's what we call it. It's the back to school crud. So I have the back to school crud. I apologize for my voice. I am gonna try my best to get through this video. <laughs> we have a really cool project today, and I just cannot get over the way that I sound. It's really, it just sounds bad, I'm so sorry. Um, but I've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Hi, Joan, thank you, Joan. <laughs> Joan, I hope, <laughs> Joan and I were together on Tuesday, Joan, I hope I don't make you sick. Okay, so there, are, it's really unfortunate that I'm losing my voice, laryngitis. It's just one of those things. I feel like God has a sense of humor because I talk so much. I feel like when I get laryngitis, it's like God's way of telling me to shut up because <laughs> I'm a talker. So I have to laugh because it happens more than once during the year. So this probably won't be the last time you guys hear me sound like a crazy person. Okay, so anyway, let's get to it. The There are so many things going on right now over on jessejamespeeds.com. Um, there is a huge sale that is going on. There is 60% off the regular clearance section. And check your email because there's a code for that. There is also, um, you can also get the code by Facebook messaging Jesse James Speeds to get that code. There's over 200 things that are in the clearance section, which that's a lot of stuff, you guys. And the chain that I'm using in today's project, which is gorgeous, might I add, is also in the clearance section. So definitely go check that out. You do not want to miss out on that. It is super, super cool. Also, guys, if you don't check the Jesse James Speeds website on a regular basis, you need to do that. I try to check on a regular basis because it's my job to do that. But um, I had been kind of busy with other things and I didn't really have a chance to look until this morning. And under what's new, Oh my gosh, there is so much amazing new stuff on the website. There are new resin things that are going on and I may have a project for you guys coming up using resin. So stay tuned for that because that's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. I'm gonna film that this weekend. Um, and then there are some new Chi Chi class strands oh, and they are so awesome. There's a lot of stuff. If you haven't gone and checked out what's new, go check out what's new when this is over and then grab your code and go to the clearance section. Gosh, I sound bad. I'm so sorry. Go to the clearance section <laughs> and do some shopping. Enjoy all of the goodness that is there because the clearance section is already priced really, really well. And then when you add the code to it, it's like, I mean, come on, it's good stuff. And just in case some of you are wondering, the tying station, which is one of my favorite tools ever, it's over on the clearance section, you guys. If you don't have one, grab it, grab it, grab it. Good morning, everybody. I've just been jibber jabbering away with my laryngitis voice and <laughs> I haven't said hi to everybody. Good morning, thank you all for joining me. I apologize if you are just joining and you hear me sound like this it's 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 all right <laughs> by this time next week I'll be regular again so it's all good okay so today's project we're making a necklace I'm really excited this is a really pretty kind of statement piece it's very feminine and we're using some beautiful chain I'm gonna hold it up and show it to you and you guys know you'll get to see it up close too that light is just really really bad I'm gonna have to figure out a way oh there you go 
Hope you guys can see it. See the roses that are on this chain? And the gold color of this is absolutely beautiful. One of the things that I love about Jesse James Speeds is their strive to get gold colors right. You know what I mean? Like some gold colors and findings in chain, it's just not the right color. It looks very, what's the word, without being, uh, without being mean. <laughs> It, it just doesn't look like real gold, you know? Sometimes you get really yellow tone and it just doesn't look good. Jesse James Speeds, they strive really hard to find really warm, beautiful tones of gold that match and work well with everything. So that's, you know, I, when you order something that's got gold color from the Jesse James Speeds website, I promise you that when you open it up, you're gonna be like, wow, that's beautiful. And maybe that doesn't mean a lot to some people, but to, to me in particular, it's really hard to find good gold that's not real gold, you know what I mean. Okay, so we're using that chain and we're also using check glass beads, which maybe you don't know, over on the Jesse James Beads website, there is a huge selection of check glass beads. And so we're gonna be using three different styles of check glass beads for this project. And they're all very different shaped. They're all very different color and finished, which I think you guys are gonna love them. I'm gonna show them to you and then we're gonna make all of the pieces and then we're gonna put all the pieces together. So this is really gonna be kind of a short project once we get started with it, which is good for me because I gotta save my voice for later too. So let's get started. I'm excited to turn you guys around. Karen, you are right. No one likes brassy gold. I don't like brassy gold. I like warm, mm, yeah. And that's what Jesse James Speeds does. All right, let me turn you around. All right, so what a strange angle we are at today. Kind of feels like how I feel. <laughs> the angle looks like what I feel. Okay, so this is the chain. It is awesome. One of my favorite things over on the Jesse James Speeds website is chain. They have so many different chains and they come in different styles and colors. This one is really, really cool. So we're gonna be using this one and again, that's over in the clearance section, so ch check it out. Love it. And then we're gonna be using a selection of check glass beads. So we're using some of these kind of peachy pink color and the shape on these, I know there's an official name, but I don't know what it is right off the top of my head. So there's that shape. We're gonna need seven of these. I'm gonna set those to the side. And then we're gonna need six of just the regular check glass round. These are clear and they have that AB finish, which is really beautiful. You're gonna need six of those. And then we're gonna use seven of this really, really cool shape. It's an oval, but it also has like, I don't even know how to explain it. It has these lines that are going through it that is just really, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of watermelon I know it's not watermelon color and watermelons do not have those <laughs> stripes. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. That's just the cold medicine talking. <laughs> but what I wanted to say before we get started with the check glass, I think that, um, you know, check glass is a huge, that's a, it's, that's huge when it comes to beads. Everybody knows check glass. You know what it is immediately when somebody says it. But there are different grades and that's not official, that's just the word I'm using at the moment. There are different grades of check glass beads, meaning you can get top of the line check glass beads or you can get really bad check glass beads. And <laughs> there for a while I was working with check glass beads, not with Jesse James beads, but elsewhere in my career, I was working with check glass beads that were not, they weren't great. And so every time somebody would say check glass beads to me, I would roll my eyes and think, oh, no, not again. No more check glass because the quality was just not really good. The quality on Jesse James beads check glass is amazing, like for real. <laughs> and the choices that they have as far as shapes and sizes and colors and textures is really awesome. So don't be like me, don't roll your eyes when it comes to check glass beads. Go check out the selection on Jesse James Speeds website because they've got some really beautiful, beautiful check glass beads that are seriously good quality. Like I'm not, I'm not even lying. <laughs> 
and one of the ways that you can tell particularly with the the um the ones that have that pearlesque on them if you look at the hole on the bead and you can see that it's not chipped and of course it does have the little has the little lip on it on one side that's just because that's part of the process which you can sand that off if you want to but it really doesn't make any difference but the um the coating that is on the pearlesque ones does not come off and i can say that from experience because i've worked with these for i've worked with a ton of these and that's that's a big deal to me if the coating starts to chip off they go in the trash so these are really awesome okay so let's get started let's talk about what we need for this and let me grab my tools we we actually don't need a lot there's really very few things that you're going to need you're going to need your selection of check glass beads whatever shape and size you want you're also going to need some chain and i'm using this chain i showed you guys and I'm not using the chain in a whole piece. What I've done is I've cut the chain into sections. And actually, I did not cut this at all. This chain is held together by a series of jump rings in between the little oval sections and the roses, okay? So there was no cutting involved. You just open up the jump rings and make your sections of chain. So I needed three sections that look like this, that have the oval and the roses on them. So when you take your chain apart, go ahead and do that, but leave your jump rings on either end. We're gonna use those. There's no sense in taking the jump rings off and then replacing them with different jump rings. So definitely keep those. So you're gonna need three of these, <laughs> these rather, and then you need four that are just the rows. And again, leave the jump rings on because we're gonna utilize those jump rings and not have to use any of our own, okay? So you wanna go ahead and make your, your little sections of chain first and then set them to the side. And then we're gonna do all of our little bead sections and set those to the side and then we're just gonna put everything together. Okay, so what are you gonna need? The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your, I think I, think I just saw it go by, I think Sarah called this a potato bead. <laughs> I might be wrong. Like I said, I, 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 I'm not really sure. I was not paying attention and I should have been. And then you're gonna use some 22 gauge wire. I'm using German style wire. I've cut these into four and a half to five inch sections. Realistically, you're only gonna need about three inches. I always cut more than I need. You can use um, artistic wire for this as well. But 22 gauge is my go-to gauge for this, so definitely use the 22 gauge all right so we're gonna make a little beaded connector so we're gonna have a wraps loop on either end of our pieces of wire so to get started you're gonna come down about an inch on your wire maybe an inch and a half it's really whatever you're comfortable working with and we're gonna bend that wire 90 degrees okay and then we're gonna come in with our round nose pliers and we're gonna place the wire running between the barrel of the pliers and we're gonna go up and over, okay? And then adjusting the grip so that we can go ahead and guide that wire on around. So when I take it off of the pliers, we've got our little loop and we have our tail section here. I'm gonna put that back on the pliers and I'm gonna switch hands and then I'm gonna use my chain nose pliers to wrap about three times around that long section of the wire, okay? And now I've got that little tiny tail and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna trim that off. Okay, and now I'm gonna thread my bead on. And I'm starting with these larger beads. It really doesn't matter, you just well, it kind of does matter because we're going to do seven like this and then seven, I'm sorry, six like this with loops. These both will have loops on either end. And then the pearl looking ones, we're only going to do a loop on one end, okay? But we'll get there. Hold tight. All right, so now that we've got the bead on the wire, we're going to go ahead and do a wrap loop on the other side as well. This is going to create a beaded connector. So I'm going to bend that wire 90 degrees over the, the pliers. And you'll notice I didn't do that bend right at the bead. I had enough room there for my pliers. 
because you want to leave enough room so that when you come in with your round nose pliers, you can stick your round nose pliers right in there, okay? Be sure you have that extra room. Don't make that bend right over the top of the bead. All right, we're going up and over, and then on around, I'm gonna switch hands, okay? And then I'm gonna wrap. You guys, I totally forgot to tell you something, and I wanted to. I just re I just remembered what it was. So I'm gonna trim this off, and as I'm trimming, I'm gonna tell you. So I have a brand new program that I'm gonna be using coming up to create the video that you guys are seeing. Our Facebook Lives are gonna be able to, we're gonna have picture in picture, if that makes sense, and maybe a little bit of graphic fun, just for fun. So hopefully, I, it was ready this week, but as you can tell, I, I feel awful. So, so I personally was not ready to use it, but hopefully by next week, everything will be a go, and we'll have a little bit different setup for these videos. I'm really looking forward to it. I think you guys are gonna like it. It's gonna be really cool. So you'll be able to see like what I'm doing and the finished piece all at the same time. So it's pretty cool. Okay, so we have our beaded bead here, our beaded bead, oh my gosh, this is not a beaded bead. A bead link, there we go. <laughs> we have a bead link with our wrapped loops on either end, and you're gonna need seven of these. So with the magic of TV, <laughs> I went ahead and did all seven, okay? So I did one for you guys to watch, and then I have seven of these ready to go so that you guys don't have to sit here all day and listen <laughs> to me and watch me do seven of these. So seven of these, sit these to the side. We're gonna come right back to them. And then we're gonna do six of the regular check glass rounds the same way. I'm gonna do one and then I have the rest of them ready to go. So again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come down about an inch, inch and a half, bend that wire 90 degrees, Bring in our round nose pliers, <laughs> my poor voice, <laughs> and going up and over. Okay, I'm gonna adjust the grip. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch hands. And then I'm going to wrap that tail around the long end of the wire about three times just like we did with the other one, okay? And we're gonna trim that off. Okay, and now we're gonna thread on our bead. So the reason that I even remembered, <laughs> this is kind of gross, but you guys know when you're sick, I mean, your body just, it just is what it is. Thread the bead on, we're gonna do a wrap loop on the other end. Um, so what got me thinking about it and why I remember that I have forgotten to tell you is because my nose is literally dripping right this second. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh my gosh, thank goodness I'm not using that program right now. <laughs> because they could see that my nose is running. So yes, you're welcome. You don't get to see my runny nose. <laughs> All right, so I'm bending that wire 90 degrees. <laughs> and I'm coming in with my round nose pliers. And I'm going up and over, okay, and on around. Yes, thank you, Karen, for answering Misty's question. Misty asked what gauge. This is 22 gauge wire in gold color. I'm using German style wire, um, but you can use artistic wire if you want to. <laughs> you guys are laughing at not seeing my runny nose. <laughs> All right, and now I'm going to trim this off. All right, so now we have another little beaded link with the loops on both sides, and you're gonna need six of these. And so I went ahead and did the rest so you don't have to sit here forever. <laughs> so we've got seven of the other ones and six of these, okay? Sit these to the side and we're gonna move right along. And this time we're going, we're going to work on this guy. <laughs> Thank you, Sheesh. <laughs> Sheila says that I need hot tea and lemon. I do. I had um, I had hot tea and lemon last night and after I had my coffee this morning. 
And honestly, what I need more than anything is a nap. And I'm going to do that <laughs> as soon as I'm done here. All right. So on this one, actually, we're not going to do a wrap to loop. We are going to create our own little head pin. Oh, no. Sue says, in the UK, our wire is not done in gauge. It's millimeters. So what would that be? You know what, Sue? I don't know. But I can look that up. <laughs> Just, I'm squeezing my finger as I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm such a weirdo. I can look that up for you and find out, and I will post it in the comments unless somebody else knows the answer to that question. That's a really good question and something that I never even think about. I need to start incorporating that kind of measurement for our friends that are not here in the U.S. That's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Okay, so we're going to take another piece of our wire that we've cut, and it's just a, you know, a four-inch section of wire. Mine's way longer. And we're going to do our trusty little knotted head pin. We're going to grab that wire right at the tip, and we are going to turn the wire around the tip of the pliers one time, okay? And then we're going to go a second time right underneath. And then we're going to stop right where we see the wire where we started. Okay, so you see that little tiny piece right there? <laughs> That's where we started. So we're going to stop. Keep it on the pliers and take your tail end of the wire and bend it out this direction, 90 degrees, or whatever is, is close to 90 degrees. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Now you want to take this off of the pliers. You've got your two loops here on the bottom. We're going to take the tail end of that wire and we're going to go back through whoops the two loops okay just like this okay now you want to come in with your nylon jaw pliers and I like to use bent chain nose pliers for this but a regular pair of pliers will work just as well grab the tip of that wire be sure that you're holding right up against those two loops okay and then you're going to pull and pull really tight okay so now you've got this cute little rosette knotted portion of your wire and you've made yourself a little head pin okay and we are going to thread on the bead that I just lost <laughs> it's one of those days all right so we're gonna thread our bead on and bring it down right up against the knot that we made and now we are going to create a wrapped loop, okay? So I'm grabbing the wire right at the top of the bead, bending the wire. You guys are so helpful. I'm like working away and Joan and Karen have looked up to find the gauge for that wire or the, the measurement. That is so sweet. Thank you all. I love this group. Everybody here is always so helpful and kind. I appreciate that very much. All right, so I brought in my round nose pliers. Hi, Pam. <laughs> I'm going up and over. And then I'm going to adjust the grip. Okay, switching hands. Jane says she loves these pearls. I do too. They are so pretty. And the shape, I really enjoy the shape of these. It's very different. All right, so I've just wrapped around three times. Okay. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim off the tail of my wire. So now I have a little beaded dangle, which is different than the connector because the connector has the loops on both ends. Okay, so you're going to need seven of these, just like the larger beads. And I went ahead and did the rest of them for you so that we are not here forever. <laughs> okay, so... We've got all of our beads are ready to go. Bring them all out here so you can see them. Those of you who are just now joining us, we have created these beaded links. You guys are in just such a weird place. There we go. We have the larger beads with the loops on both sides, the rounds that have the loops on both sides, and then our pearls that have just the single loop on one end, okay? So now we're gonna start assembling everything and don't forget about your chain pieces as well. We also have 
our pieces of chain, we've got three that have that oval and the rows, and then we have four that are just the rows, okay? But again, keep the jump rings on there. This is very, very important. We don't wanna use up more jump rings than we need to. Okay, so now we're gonna start assembling everything. And this is the part where I always feel like <laughs> I make a mistake, but that's okay, we're gonna go slow, okay? So I do have on hand a bunch of eight millimeter jump rings. This is way more than we need, but this is what I've got. I just have, I just grabbed a handful of them. We're gonna use these. You can use sixes if you want to. The four millimeters are a little on the small side. I do like the incorporation of the larger jump ring in this design, but it's totally up to you. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to link together all of these oval shaped beads and we're gonna link them all together with the jump rings, but when we open the jump ring and link the bead on, we're also going to link on a middle bead. Oh, I'll show you, I'll show you, because what I just said just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up one of these jump rings. I'm using two pairs of pliers to open that jump ring laterally, okay? I'm gonna thread on one of the beaded loops. <sighs> beaded, it is not a beaded loop. I don't know why I keep saying that. The wrapped loop. <laughs> Okay, so I've thread that on, and we're gonna thread another one of the beads on to create a little chain, but before we do that, we're gonna thread on one of our rounds. So go ahead and thread the round on, then thread on the other bead and close your jump ring. Okay, so now when you hold it up, you've got two beads with the smaller bead hanging in the middle. This is just going to keep you from having to open and close those jump rings over and over again, okay? I don't like to open a jump ring more times than I have to, so I try to do all the work at the same time. Sometimes I forget, and that's okay. I mean, we're all human, right? Jane says, what size jump rings? The jump rings for this are eight millimeter. Oh, thank you, Kathleen. Catherine, Kathleen was right there to answer that. You guys are awesome. Okay, so we've got this little link together. Okay, so now we're gonna add another one. We're gonna open up a jump ring. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna thread the jump ring on to that wrapped loop on the end of our bead. Okay, and now we're gonna thread on one of the check glass rounds and we're gonna thread on one of our little pieces of chain, we're using the one that is just the rows and the two jump rings, okay? So thread on one of those jump rings and one of your large beads, okay? So this jump ring's got a big job. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen, I appreciate that very much. <laughs> I know I have, I have another Facebook to do today, so I, I am, I've, I've not talked all morning. My family was like, hooray, mom has laryngitis. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have to hear me this morning. <laughs> they all they all love it when I get laryngitis. They think it's the funniest thing ever. Because mom can't fuss at anybody for anything. I just nod my head and go on. Okay, so opening another jump ring, we're going to thread that on. <laughs> and we are going to thread on, this time, one of the links of our chain that has... Oh, wait. Nope. Just kidding. We're gonna do the same thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're gonna thread on the one that's just the rows and one of our check glass rounds, okay? So thread all of that on and then our bead. And then we're gonna close that back, okay? All right, so we're moving right along here. And you're gonna see, it's gonna start to come together for you a little bit. You're gonna see when you lay it down. Uh-oh, I've got that on the wrong side. I think that's all right. We'll switch that around. So as I, well, it would help if you could see it as well. So when I lay it down, I know we're not done yet, but I just wanna show you guys what we're gonna end up doing. So these two will be connected with another jump ring. This guy is gonna hang. And then same thing over here, except that I thread these on the wrong direction. So I'm going to open this up and thread these on the right way. So with this guy, we want the chain to go on, the chain section to go on first. Okay. 
and then we're going to thread on the round. Is that right? <laughs> I'm, I'm asking myself, is that right or is that what I just did? Oh my, you guys. Cold medicine going to my head. All right, so now when I lay it down, you'll see. Yes. So these two are going to connect to each other. And then these two will hang with some things and then we're going to do another one. So I'm going to open up another jump ring. We're just going right along. Just trying to give you kind of a visual of how this is going to look at the end. And hopefully with the new program that I'm going to use, I'm not going to have to do that. You guys will be able to just see it as we go, which is going to be really, really helpful. I'm really looking forward to having that option. Okay, so now I've thread on the jump ring. Okay. And we're going to thread on another one of the rounds. We're going to thread on the piece of our chain. And this one is going to be one of the long pieces. Okay. So we're going to thread on our long piece of chain that is, no, we're not. Yeah, we are. <laughs> I'm having to look at the picture. It's It's been a minute since I made this. It was yesterday, and I definitely have slept since then. Thank you for being patient with me. All right, so this time we're going to thread on the long one. This is going to be the center of the necklace. Okay, and then we are going to thread on... I really feel like I'm doing this the wrong way, but... We'll figure it out at the end. Okay, I'm going to thread on that bead and now I'm going to close it. I can always go back. It's really hard. It's like when you're when you're creating the piece, you know what it looks like. And then you take it all apart and it's like, now what did I do again? <laughs> all right. So we're just moving right along. We've got two more of these beads left and we've got two more of our rounds. We're going to just connect everything together. And then I may have to make a couple of little changes because I think that I may have done this wrong but that's okay you guys are always so understanding <laughs> and I have an excuse right I'm sick I have an excuse <laughs> okay so this time we're gonna thread on the chain with just the rows okay then our check glass round and then our larger bead and then we're gonna close that back okay it'll make sense when we start connecting everything together on the bottom oh my gosh the beads are falling out of a little cup here okay so opening one more jump ring and we're going to do the exact same thing and then we are going to move down a level okay so everything will start to make some sense threading on that last jump ring for this row threading on our last little chain section that is just the rows our glass round and then the last one okay and so then we're going to close that up so now when we lay everything out, hopefully it will make a little bit more sense. So we're going to come down a step. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up a jump ring. Try to lay this so that you guys can see it as I go along. We'll just kind of move it as we go. Okay, so I'm going to open up another jump ring. Same size. These are all eights. You can use sixes if you want to. I'm going to open up that jump ring and I'm going to thread on to the bottom of the check glass round and I'm going to thread on one of our chain pieces that we have left that has the rose and the oval I'm doing it I want the rose towards the top okay and the oval down here at the bottom <laughs> Kathleen says with the new program you will have to talk less <laughs> That's hilarious. And then she says, like, that will happen. Yeah, no. <laughs> Everybody knows I'm a talker. I'm telling you, that's why I get laryngitis, because the universe is like, really, girl, you need to be quiet for a little while. <laughs> All right, so I'm closing that jump ring back. I'm using my fingers, you guys. Do not do that. Use your, <laughs> use your chain nose pliers. I'm just being really bad today. Okay, so now you can see, all right, where we're going with this design. It all starts to make a little bit more sense. We've got these two connected here with a jump ring, and then we have a piece of chain here, okay? And this is where I said it's important that you leave on the jump ring because we're going to come down here and open up this jump ring, and then we're going to thread on, remember the pearl beads, the pearl check glass beads that just have one loop? We're going to thread one of those on. So this is going to be the dangle 
and it's going to look really, really pretty when it is hanging. I'll show you guys when we get finished. But you get a good, a good look at this. So we've got this long section here. So pretty. Okay. So now we have our rows next to this little section, and it's got a jump ring. Same thing. We're going to open that jump ring up, and we're going to do some staggered beads here. So we're going to add another one of those pearl beads to this, but it's going to hang shorter than that first one. So we're going to have kind of this tiered look. Well, it's not really tiered because it doesn't graduate, but you'll see. It's going to be staggered. It's going to be really pretty. This was a great design. And luckily, yesterday, this is day three of my cold, and my brain was just not working yesterday. And I had Sarah's help with this, and I was so thankful to have her Put, give her input to this design because I just could not make it work. You have those days, you know, and I had a Monday like that. So I should have known it was going to be that kind of week. <laughs> All right. So we've got another rose section here that just has the jump ring. We're going to add another one of the dangles. And again, this is going to be one of the short ones because this is just that small piece of chain with just the rose. <laughs> Okay, we're going to thread that on, closing that back, okay, and now, moving down a little bit, now we're down here to what is actually supposed to be the center, no, is it? <laughs> I think I did this, I did this wrong, I did do this wrong, you guys, that's all right though. You know, we'll fix our mistakes. So what I have here, this is actually supposed to be the center. This guy, I don't know why I stuck him on there. I don't know. Getting ahead of myself. So I'm going to open this up. Whoa. I'm going to open this up and take this guy off. We will, we'll come back to him in just a second. Okay. So this is going to be the center of our necklace. So we want another one of the long portions. This is really awkward. Okay. Here we go. I'm going to open up one of our jump rings okay I'm gonna thread it through the bottom loop of that one before I loop on this one I'm gonna thread on this long piece of chain that I had in the wrong place and it's missing a jump ring all right hold on we're gonna add a jump ring to this guy he lost his jump ring somewhere around okay So close this guy back up. There we go. All right, thread him on. <laughs> and now we're going to thread on the other one, the other check glass round. And I know my fingers are in the way, but I'll move them back so you guys can see here in just a second exactly what I've done. It's just what we did in the very first little linked section. So we've got our two check glass rounds that are connected with a jump ring and then our long chain piece here. So this is longer than this guy. So what we needed was a short piece here, and I don't know how I ended up <laughs> without a short piece. I know what I did, but that's all right. We're gonna fix it, no problem. All right, so we've got our short little guy here. Everything is exactly like it's supposed to be now. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, you guys. Open up the jump ring here. All right, and we're gonna thread on just the beaded dangle bead here, the little pearl, okay? And now we need to connect. I'm just moving down a little bit, just kind of moving all this other stuff out of the way. It's hard, I know you can't see the whole thing all at once. Now, you'll see this rose is in the wrong place, so I'm gonna open this up and re-thread this so that the rose is on the outside and the check glass round is on the inside. Okay, now everything makes sense. <laughs> Thank you guys for being patient. I appreciate it very, very much. Okay, so now we've got this section here. We're gonna go ahead and open up our jump ring. And we're gonna thread that on to the bottom loop of our check glass round and then we are going to thread on our piece of chain, our last long piece of chain with the rose and the oval link and then the check glass round 
okay and when I move my finger you'll be able to see what we've got okay so now we just need to add the pearl pieces to these two and to this guy here in the middle okay so we've got three of those left and we're just going to utilize the jump rings that are already here I love it when the chain pieces already have what I need <laughs> that is that's always a bonus as I do a lot of cutting with chain and a lot of times when you cut your chain pieces then you're always missing a link and you have to add your jump rings and so I really like that this chain has the jump rings in between there there was no cutting it was just opening and closing jump rings which is nice you know and it keeps the chain looking nice all right last one we're gonna attach this last little dangle and then we're gonna use some small chain for the length portion of this necklace now if you wanted to did you need to switch the last two dangles I did I did so when I lay it out <laughs> I'm missing one you know what oh my gosh you guys <sighs> what a day I, I promise it's just because I'm sick. I'm so not on top of things today. This guy doesn't go there. He goes right here. <laughs> Jane, if you had not said that, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't have noticed until we got to the end. Okay, now the world makes sense. <laughs> oh my gosh. I need to go to bed. All right, so we have our long dangle here. We've got two short ones. We've got a long in the center two short ones and a long one that makes way more sense I'm so so sorry you guys I appreciate you being understanding today I think everybody has an off day you know whether you're sick or not it just it just kind of happens and putting these designs together especially when there are a lot of links it's easy to get lost in what you're doing and then end up with a hot mess so all right so now we have the main portion of our necklace ready to go and the end all we're gonna do here is we're just gonna add some small chain I've got some small gold chain I've already added the clasp and some jump rings to this and then the jump rings on the ends are ready to go I used four millimeters for these um, just because I didn't want to I don't know the transition from the beads to the chain I wanted it to be less noticeable more subtle so I used a smaller jump ring for this transition but it's totally up to you and something that is worth mentioning if you've got more of this chain you can use this for the length portion of your necklace if you want to okay so definitely utilize the rest of this chain if you want I didn't because I'm saving that little piece for something else <laughs> All right, so I'm going to open up this jump ring, and I'm going to thread this on, and then I'm going to do the other side, and I'm going to flip you guys around so that you can really kind of see what this necklace looks like hanging. I'm not going to put it on me, but I'm going to put it on a neck so that you can see it because it's it looks totally different hanging on a neck than it does laying flat, okay? So I just attached my two pieces of chain, and in case you are wondering, these two pieces of chain are five and a half inches, so this is going to be um, about an 18-inch necklace. I didn't make a full choker out of this. I did want to give a little bit of room. A choker sometimes just tends to be too tight. So, All right, so there's your chain, and if you need tiny chain, Jesse James Bead's website, there are there is tiny chain for that as well. Rita, you are right. This would be a beautiful design for a bridesmaid or mother of the bride. It really would. This is such a dressy look. Let me grab a neck and then I'm going to flip you guys around. Hold on just a second. Okay. So I'm going to flip you around so that you guys can see what this looks like. <laughs> so I had to grab the neck and make sure that I didn't have like nose drippage going on okay so I've, I've i got a neck here i'm going to put it on the neck so that you guys can see it this way um just to kind of give you an idea of what it's going to look like now you could do this in any beads when i very first made this design yesterday the colors that i had chosen were um browns and blacks which is great for fall um but i think that this with Sarah's help <laughs> my brain has just not been working this week look how pretty that looks so there is a method to the madness I know it was a crazy mess for just a second but there really is a real look here it just took me a minute to get there so thank you for being patient with me you guys 
this is a really beautiful design that you could take to the next step. You could actually create beaded loops on, what is it with the beaded loops? Wrapped loops on the ends of your pearl pieces and you could hang chain or a beaded chain between them. I mean, you could really go over the top with this. I just gave you kind of the base look and now it's up to you to take it to the next level if you want to, or you can tone it down a little bit. You could have made these longer sections, short sections as well, and it would give it, it would still be a beautiful necklace, but it would give it a different look, a little bit more understated. So a lot of options. I always want to give you guys options. And then of course, changing the chain, changing the bead colors and shapes and textures is going to create a completely different look as well. So I just give you the base de design and then you guys take it and run with it. So I, I hope you guys liked it. <laughs> I really, I thought it turned out really, really beautiful and it looks much better hanging than it does flat. All right. So I'm going to set this to the side. Oh, and say my thank yous to all of you guys for joining me today and listening to my <laughs> my terrible voice. Excuse me. I'm just all types of just, yeah, it's, it's just running and it's bad. Um, so I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys being here and being patient with me and understanding <laughs> that I have no voice and my nose is dripping and... <laughs> But we still did it. We still did it. You guys, I, I don't care if I have the flu. I'm going to be here with you guys because I look forward to doing this every week. This is a really important part of my weekly process. I get so much from being here with you guys. I hope that you guys take away things from me as well. I hope that I'm sharing things that you guys can take and translate into your own jewelry design. Um, that's always my goal. So I appreciate the love that I get back from you guys. It's really, really appreciated very, very much. I will be on the Silver Silk Facebook <laughs> Facebook page tonight at 6.30 Eastern Time. So set your reminders for that. I've got a fun project using some Jesse James beads, of course. Um, as far as tomorrow on Sarah Ellis Designs Facebook page, the 1 p.m. Facebook Live is canceled. <laughs> I need to take tomorrow and rest. So that's what I'm going to do. And I know you guys understand that. So I've got to take care of me. So I'm going to get through today and then tomorrow. Don't, don't call me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> don't call me. I'll be asleep. No, I'm going to rest tomorrow. And then on Saturday, I'll be right back on it because I've got some great projects for you guys. I'm filming a resin project that I can't wait to show you guys. Um, and so yeah, be looking forward to that. And this time next week, I ought to be back to myself again. So, all right, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being patient. Thank you for being kind and giving love. I love it. Um, I give that all back to you guys. I really do have a wonderful rest of the day and I may see you this evening. If not, I will see you again this time next week. Bye guys.